my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Welcome, my friends, to The Pulse. Guys, trying to keep our ear on the heart of King Jesus, just like John did at the Last Supper. What are you listening to today? Guys, friends, I'm Troy Brewer, and I'm a senior pastor out of Open Door Church, and I'm going to mute my computer here. Guys, I'm back from the nation of Uganda. I'm back from Qatar, which... If I can just tell you this, is an amazing country who is not the friend of Israel. Wait till I tell you about that. And then also, um, I'm also back from South Africa and uh, spent the last week in South Africa. It was incredible. Just got back late last night. I have no idea uh, which side of the world I'm on, which means I left my filter about 7,000 miles away today. So get ready. That means that there's a bunch of stuff that will definitely get me censored that I won't be able to tell you unless we go behind the veil, which is going to happen in about 30 minutes from right now. And if you are part of, if you are a second stage participant or third stage participant at odx.tv, you're going to stay on board. And I'm going to tell you about our super secret African rescue, where we're about to rescue 500 people, as many as 500. It could actually be more from some Islamic terrorists and some knuckleheads that do not think that the body of Jesus is going to respond, but they don't know you and they don't know me. And guys, we're going after them. Yes. It's going to be a fun day. Welcome my friends. Be sure and type something in and say hello. Just like, I don't know, Sherry Morgan just did. And Cassie Miller just did. And Daring Destiny. Oh man, what a cool name that is. Daring Destiny. Good day. And welcome back, sir, from Virginia. Hello. And hello, Mary Sizemore, who's always a part of this. And somebody sent and lots of, I don't know what those, Emo- yeah, what are those emojis? emojis. They're, they're emojis. called emojis. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. And <laughs> I see uh, all kinds of cool people. Everybody's saying hello. Tiffany Adams, how in the world are you? Jennifer Wyatt, so happy to see you. And over here on the ODX side, I see William Blair is here. I also see Debbie Smith. I see Concepcion Jenkins, who happens to be right across from me. How are you, Miss Connie? <laughs> I'm doing good. So glad to have you back, PT. Are you really happy I'm back? Mm-hmm. I am. We you should y'all. be so happy I'm back. <laughs> I bet, I bet you, I bet you mourned while I was away. We think yeah, a gnashing of Yeah, <laughs> that's so good. You girls are back in the will. That's the kind of service I deserve. Connie, you're going to ask me some questions today, and we're going to talk about some things. What are you going to talk to me about? We are going to talk about the upcoming April 8th mm. eclipse. Mm. That's good. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we need to talk about that. One of the full, uh, one of the fun things that I got to do recently is I was on Daystar. They did a video. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was there for four hours, which I want to just tell you, man, that is, that's like, <laughs> that's a tough gig. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And and you you have no idea for four hours how long you're going to talk if it's going to be five minutes or if it's going to be on the entire time because they just kind of flow mm-hmm. and it's really hard to prepare and if you're a fat guy you're wondering man is my buttons you know or am, am I doing this I was wearing a suit and I was not comfortable in the suit at all and I wore a suit uh, Ben Brewer. Because I thought everybody else was going to wear a suit. I wore a suit, and I was the only dork that was not in a suit, that was wearing a suit that you know, day. At some point, you should be smart enough to ask ahead, is this a suit and tie it's event? It's Daystar, and it's like Hollywood up there. Oh, everybody gosh. dresses so nice, you know? Every and time you show me. up, we have the same issue. You're always dressed the wrong way. <laughs> I try and be cool. I try so hard to be cool, and I can't. So anyway, guys, we've had over a million views mm-hmm. of that one video. A million. Whoop, whoop. A million yeah. views. That's a million people that God Almighty has given us influence Jesus. over. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're telling people about the eclipse. And I want to tell you, people in America, are, are they're panicking. Literally, mm-hmm. our schools mm-hmm. are shutting down. Yep. People are freaking out. Uh, they're hiring. The, the, the National Guard is being released because people are scared. Of, that's never happened in an eclipse before. And it's because people are getting a message mm-hmm. that something is up, but they don't know what. I know what's up, mm-hmm. and I'm going to tell them all about it. So what are you asking me about today? Oh, man, there's so many different things I want to touch on. But one of the things I'm actually excited to talk to you about yes. is Nineveh. Nineveh. And how there are seven cities in the United States that the eclipse actually crosses over. And seven what is God cities? saying through that? Mm. 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 Oh. Ah. <laughs> yes, indeedy, weedy, my friends. It, you can't ignore it. You can't deny it. King Jesus is speaking. The heavens are being shaken today, which according to Joel 3.16 means God is speaking through the heavens. So when the heavens are shaken, it means the voice of God Amen. is in the midst of it. And we're going to be talking about that in a really cool way. And then directly across from you is a lovely and gracious Miss Rebecca. How are you? Pastor, I'm so glad you're back. You bring this peace. Not that it's not here, but... We missed you. I bring peace. Do you yes. hear that? Do you hear that over there, guys? Why are you gonna lie? All of you guys behind the cameras. <laughs> we had a great time. Schwartz is over here. <laughs> yeah, just, you know. The spirit of peace yeah. comes with yeah. me. Yes, it so does. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for being back. But yeah. I'm I'm honestly what 
what does the giant X mean? What what is that? What is the Lord speaking mm. through that? That's my yeah. question. For today. Why did the two make a giant X? Mm-hmm. Mm. One of it is a Hebrew letter that represents a prophetic sign. Mm-hmm. Is literally a Hebrew letter that means a prophetic sign. This is a sign, which is exactly what Moses wrote down in Genesis 1.14. He says that he, he created the sun and the moon and the stars. He placed them in the firmament, and it says, for signs, seasons, days, and years. That's what he put okay. them up there for. So it's supposed to be for signs. So mm-hmm. just in case you didn't get it, it was a sign. God put a giant X across our nation. And it's like, you got mm-hmm. that? Maybe, maybe. Well, maybe you'll get it that it happens on April the 8th. And what does the Bible wow. say in, in Exodus, April 8th, Exodus, Exodus 4, 4 8, 8? He says, he tells Moses, if they will not believe you for the first sign, they will believe you because of the second, second. sign. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. So good. Bend your chin. I just got to rub it for a minute. Mm, okay. Yes. It's just outstanding. Yes. Okay. Well, that's going to be good, guys. It's going to be a good show. I'm so happy everybody's here. Guys, for all my friends that have been praying for me all over the world, thank you for praying for me. I needed the prayers and you needed the practice. <laughs> it works out like that. I, I, I want to start off here by saying that uh, on Sunday morning, I was at a church. I was at Urban Life Church in, um, where was I at? Johannesburg, South Africa, on Sunday morning. And then I left there and went to the airport, flew, uh, was there for two hours, flew from eight, uh, flew for eight hours to Doha and uh, Qatar and was there, had another eight-hour layover from there. And it took 16 hours and 45 minutes to fly from Doha straight over the North Pole all the way down to uh, Houston, Texas. And I mourned when I flew over Fort Worth. I could see Fort Worth. Like, please just land here. And then I got off there, got on another plane, flew up here, and then landed up here and then drove uh, home uh, an an hour drive home after a quick barbecue stop at the hard eight, hallelujah, and got home at about nine o'clock last night, boom, went to sleep, went into a coma, got up this morning. Leanna fixed me bacon and eggs. Africa, I love you, but you got you need to get the bacon thing right. Dude, they got beef bacon yeah, they, strips. Yeah, beef they, strips. Right. No. They're afraid they're gonna make chicken. some Muslim man. Yeah. And I tell you what, I would not I would listen, I praise God, you know, for my Muslim <laughs> friends, but I'll never ask their opinion on bacon. Just just gonna yeah. tell you that. Yeah. So praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. So anyway, guys, we got that right this morning. Then I drove in, and I came here, and we're here now. And uh, we've had a tremendous time this morning. We've had a lot of a lot of things to celebrate from this last week. And I'll be sharing those things with you guys. Also, on Wednesday night, I'm preaching Open Door. I'm going to be sharing a lot of victories and some incredible things. And now we're here to do this. So we need to jump right off into this. You guys ready to do this? Mm -hmm. Is there anything I need to tell everybody before we get started? Are you good? Alan, did he ask me to join us tomorrow? Oh, Oh, is he? So right on. He's our guest tomorrow. Why? Because we couldn't find anybody cool. <laughs> like, what are we at? Because Alan we missed his for? beard. I did miss his beard. <laughs> Summoning the demon. Ford by Rick Renner. Okay, listen. I'm in his book, and it doesn't say Ford by Troy Brewer. Why has he got to put old Rick up there? What's that all about? Duly noted. Duly noted. It's a really good book. AI, Aliens, and the Antichrist. You know, honestly, uh, Alan didn't have enough hate mail. So he wrote this cutting edge book. Makes sense. It's really good. Also, I did the Ford uh, for Rick Renner's book when I was in Africa, and he's got this book called Giants, Nephilim, and the Days Before the Ark. <laughs> and I just got through it, and it is really good. I bet. I promise you mm-hmm. it's good. And I, I read the man, this book is great. It hasn't been released yet, so I thought about, you know, Stealing some of it and putting out my own book, but I don't... <laughs> don't do that. I, I don't think he'd appreciate that. The, the Ugandan lawyers said it was okay. Oh, I'm sure they did. <laughs> All right. But I got to check with our American friends over here. All right. Well, let's get off into this, guys. Friends, buckle your seatbelts because we're talking about the next great American eclipse that is going to happen. Not this coming Sunday, Easter, but the following week on the 1st of Nissan. And guys, let me just kind of tell you how this works. If you're not sure that God is speaking through this event... Let me just kind of tell you this. If you're looking at a Gregorian calendar, you need to know that seven days after Easter, there is a solar eclipse. And seven days before Easter, there was a lunar eclipse. And the lunar eclipse happened on Purim. That's when it happened. The next one, the a solar eclipse, is going to happen on um, Passover. Oh, I wonder if that could be... I wonder if there's anything important with any of that. I wonder if that could happen or... If it seems like maybe that's just an odd coincidence. Well, if you want to go back to sleep, man, you're welcome to. But you do not live in a day today where you cannot be watchful. Mm -hmm. 
Be ye watchful. The term be watchful is in the New Testament. That command is given to us 24 times, and this is the year 2024. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God, right? Right. And so this is a great time to be watchful. What does that mean? It means to be looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Mm -hmm. And it also means uh, to pay attention to prophetic things. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss your day of visitation. Amen. We can't live like this is 1950, 1960, 1970. This is the year 2024. Everybody gets on their Twitter feeds, which is now called X, right? And there's a lot of X's going on right now. You're asking about the X, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But um, everybody gets on there, and their whole hope is within some kind of political system. And they're like, I demand justice and politics and this. I demand, well, you're not going to get it. We don't live in that day anymore. And like, whoa. I don't like that. Too bad, so sad. Mm -hmm. Deal with the day that you're dealing with today. What's real is our justice comes from the Lord, and we as the people of God have got to learn how to live according to a different spirit than the mob lives in. Mm -hmm. I Listen, the mob is not your friend. Uh, the, the same people that say, I'm your friend on Friday mm -hmm. or on Monday or on Sunday will say, crucify and crucify him on the following Friday. Mm -hmm. That's the same mob. And I don't trust that mob, and I don't live according to that spirit. You and I are obligated to live according to a different spirit, yeah. Miss Connie. Right, we are. We're given are. a mandate that we don't be, we don't get overcome by evil, but we are supposed to be the ones overcoming evil well, with good. Preach that, little girl. All right, so I, I think I'm going to start off with Ben. What is your? What was the question you were going to ask me about? So, what did you want to talk about? There are seven cities <laughs> in America. Your voice is so sexy. I know it. I know it. It's I like it, but the anyway. smooth sound. We're not behind the veil yet. Oh, yeah. we're not behind the veil, which no. we will be yeah. in just a few minutes, guys, and then we can talk however we want to talk. <sighs> Lord, his but, jet lag. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Somebody my, help him. My filter is 5,000 miles away. Anyway, I'm just telling you. so my question was, there are seven cities in Nineveh. Yes. Or, I'm sorry, seven cities in the USA mm. that have the name Nineveh. There's also an eighth one in uh, Canada. Yeah, Nova Scotia. Yeah. Can you even say Nova Scotia? Nope. Mm. Nope. Nova Scotia. Nova, nope. Do you know what that means? Pigs are loose in the kitchen. The pigs are loose in the kitchen. Uh, you nailed it. it again, buddy. You're a genius. <laughs> okay, so there's seven cities called Nineveh, and like, like, yeah, there are. But for one, one of the odd things about this eclipse is it has a wider totality than any eclipse that's ever hit the United States before. Oh, I didn't know that. It's not always the wow. same. It has a wider totality. Like, why is that? Just because of the position of the Earth. Um, and where we're at and that the totality changes as it rotates around the sun, right? So it's like, okay, so it has a white, has the widest totality of any eclipse that's ever hit the United States that we've ever me measured before. And that's very interesting. Now, the first one, the first one that came across back uh, seven years ago, it was actually six years, six months, six days to the day of the next eclipse. Wow. Huh? <laughs> Again, all this just coincidence. It's just all, you know. Mm -hmm. No, no. If 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 you're going to be watchful, you're going to pay attention to this stuff and go. Uh, I think that that means something. Well, it does mean something, and you have to go to the Word of God to know what that actually means, right? Friends, do not be afraid. Let me just tell you this: do not be afraid. I was talking to old Paul Wilbur, you know, and he's he's like, "Well, I'm I'm digging a bunker. Uh, I've been listening to all your preaching, and I'm digging a bunker." That's exactly what he told me. He's such a troublemaker. He's making fun of me. I'm like, I'm not causing anybody to be fearful whatsoever, and I'm not because listen, the world the world is already afraid. No, no, no. I here's I'm going to tell you what to take serious, and I'm going to tell you what the truth is, and I'm going to tell you where our hope in King Jesus is, because that's what the message of this thing is. So um, before I tell you about Nineveh, let's go back seven years ago, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we'll go back to that first Great American Eclipse, and like, mm -hmm. well, you called it the Great American Eclipse, but we have them all the time. Mm -hmm. First time we had ever had an eclipse across the United States that only hit the United States since 1776. Well, Anybody that's... remember anything that mm -hmm. happened in 1776? Liberty. Liberty. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's when we told the Brits, ah, you never needed this continent anyway. Exactly. Hallelujah. So Who that's what we tea? did. Exactly right. <laughs> we don't like your tea. We're tired of your mess. And so we did that, right? Okay. Well, that's actually the birth of our nation, which, by the way, I just thought I'd point this out. 1776 is 888 times 2. 
888 is a numerical number of Jesus. Amen. It's the Greek word Jesus. It's the gematria, Jesus, 888, times two is 1776, and two means a faithful witness. Our nation was born to be a faithful witness of the Lord Jesus Christ, 1776. And that's what that means. Ooh, look at look at Schwartz. Schwartz is intrigued. He's learning. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're like, okay. So in 1776, we had a Great American Eclipse. We had it again in 2017, mm-hmm. and it happened on the first of Elul. Now, first of Elul is a really big is a really big deal, mm-hmm. because from the first of Elul, you have on the Hebrew calendar, you have a 40 day countdown until Judgment Day, mm-hmm. which is uh, the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. Right, so you got a forty-day countdown. So what that means is the clock is ticking, and it happened mm-hmm. on the first of Elul. Now you go back to seven—is it seven twenty-six BC? Seven sixty-three. Oh, you're so good. Seven hundred sixty-three. Seven hundred sixty-three years before the Lord Jesus Christ was manifest on this planet, there is a the Berg eclipse. Is that right? Bergstown. That's why I said Bergstown. <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't hear the rest of what I said. So, but it's also known as the Great Assyrian Eclipse. Mm-hmm. It was on that day that Jonah the prophet mm-hmm. stepped into Nineveh and said, "You cats have got forty days, and it's over with. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch you burn. I want mm-hmm. a front row seat to watch you guys burn." Everybody like Jonah's so hateful. You don't understand who the Assyrians were, mm-hmm. and you don't know what they did to Hebrew people. I know what they did, and uh, no, they needed to be dealt with. They need to be dealt with. And he marched in there on the first of Elul. And you know what happened on that day? A totality eclipse Mm -hmm. hit Nineveh on that day. So that is known as the great eclipse. You can actually look it up. Mm -hmm. It's the great Assyrian eclipse. eclipse. Mm -hmm. Happened in 726 B.C. 763. That's what I said. 763 Mm -hmm. B.C. (laughs) And... (laughs) <laughs> and, so and he walked in, and he he got their full attention. Number one, he was a Hebrew, and he was a Jew. Mm-hmm. And those cats, just 30 years before that, had attacked 24 Israeli cities. Mm-hmm. They raped and pillaged everybody that was there. It was just like October 7th event. He sat up on his throne and watched all that happen. Then he went to Jerusalem. He was going to wipe them out. And God Almighty sent one angel, and one angel killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. So they went home, whooped. They went home and went, uh, we don't know what happened here. They built all this great edifice to all their great victories uh, in Israel, and they left out the Jerusalem events. And you can see this. I've actually been to... Um, the rebuilding of the palace, which is in the great British uh, museum. Mm-hmm. They rebuilt it. They, they stole all the stuff like Brits do from all over the world. Mm-hmm. The only reason they didn't steal the that gum pyramids is because it was too heavy. But they would have moved that to downtown London. You guys know they would have, right? Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> oh, you guys wait till we go behind the veil where I can tell you what I really want to say. Hallelujah. So, so they stole it all. They moved it all there. They built a big museum around it. It's incredible. When you go in there, there's all these pictures. And I've seen it mm-hmm. of the king that the Bible mentions. Mm-hmm. That uh, that Jonah confronted, where he's on a throne watching all these cities, but he did not mention. Oh, by the way, their God destroyed 185 thousand of my soldiers. He doesn't mention that, and so because he didn't want to lose his empire, he built all this propaganda, telling everybody what a great warrior he was, without mentioning that. So Jonah had to walk into that place that was dedicated to the enslavement and the horror of his people. And he walked in there on that day, and he looked that same king in the eye and said, you got 40 days, pal, and I'm going to watch it happen. Well, they went, number one, this guy comes from the God that killed 185,000 people. And number two, there's a full-blown eclipse happening on this day. Mm -hmm. Wow. So when Jesus said... Uh, no, I'm not going to give you any additional signs. Well, I will give you one. It'll be the sign of Jonah the prophet. We as Christians and as Gentile Christians mm-hmm. with a Western lens, we think it meant three days in hell, but it didn't mean that. Now, that's an additional layer of revelation that is the church's revelation, mm-hmm. yep. but it was not the Jews' revelation at that time. They knew what the sign of Jonah the prophet was, and it was darkness. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, when Jesus was on the cross, what happened, guys? The three hours of darkness. There's three hours of darkness. Okay, here's what I'm going to ask everybody. Was there an eclipse? No, there was not an eclipse. Nobody knows how that how that darkness happened. Oh. And everybody's like, well, there was the earthquake. So what a lot of people think is that maybe when the earthquake happened, there was so much dirt in the air that it made the sun go dark. I mean, it is the desert. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. What's real is he Jesus announced that they would be given the sign of Jonah the prophet, and then the sky went dark. Mm-hmm. 
as he was being crucified, as they as they literally nailed him to a piece of wood naked, as the Romans loved to do. Everybody's like, no, we love the Romans. The Romans make the Nazis look like Boy Scouts. They are not our friends. Be advised. Amen. Mm-hmm. So I, I might be guilty of a lot of things, but I'm just going to tell you this. I'm also guilty of telling the truth. Jesus mm-hmm. is our friend, and we have to be kingdom people. Mm-hmm. And the systems and the governments of this world are not our friend. Mm-hmm. No. Amen. No. So that actually happened. Now, remember, it also, the first eclipse happened on the first of Elul. And when did the sign of Jonah the prophet happen? It happened on the first of Elul. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah. that American eclipse happened on the first of Elul. Now, that means the clock is ticking. So now seven years later, we have this other eclipse, mm-hmm. and the totality of it actually transverses seven cities in the United States called Nineveh. 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 Like, are you kidding me? Like, wow. you can't even make this <laughs> stuff up, man. This is craziness. Like, So what is it? It's the sign of Jonah the prophet, but it's also the word that Jonah gave to Nineveh is this, the clock is ticking, you need to repent. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens 40 days, what happened 40 days after Jesus was put on the cross? He ascended. He ascended into heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is also a word for the church. Be looking for the rapture of the church. Amen. Be looking. Amen. Because it's all in in the same way that you saw him ascend, he will also be returning. Mm -hmm. Anybody remember that verse? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. By the way, it also goes over Rapture, Indiana, and that's where the Mm -hmm. two, that's where the X meets, is right over Rapture, Indiana. I'm going to bring that up in a minute too. My God, somebody, somebody (laughs) just. Kiss me. Amen. Whoa. And then, please. Take it easy. I'm sorry. Take it easy. And then, and then it also enters into Eagle, it also yeah. enters into Eagle, Eagle Pass, Pass is where it begins. Mm-hmm. And what did Jesus say when he says this? Well, when they were asking Jesus, okay, what is this whole return thing about? And he, they're like, where will we gather? And he said, well, where did the eagles gather? That's Luke 17, 37. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, we come prepared for you. Oh, you did. <laughs> that's, that's outstanding. Mm-hmm. So... These seven cities called Nineveh, remember the first time it it came, and this is another big deal, is it went over seven cities called Salem. It entered in the first eclipse, entered entered into Salem, Oregon, and it went across the nation, and it went over seven cities called Mm -hmm. Salem. The second one enters in at Eagle Pass, Mm -hmm. and it goes over seven cities in America Mm -hmm. called Nineveh. Mm -hmm. Friends, this is a call to repentance. Yes. This is a recall to turn or burn as far as a nation is concerned. And here's what I want to tell you. Church, I want to hear me say this to you. If you are a drop-dead, sold-out Jesus freak, I'm going to tell you this. You're not going to like this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. And it's this. The church can make it without America. Now that I've said this, hear me say this. America cannot make it without the church. Amen. The body of Jesus has to be the body of King Jesus. We have to have a kingdom agenda. We cannot play. We can't be woke. We can't be trying to satisfy the enemies of God. We have to be the people of the Lord. We have to be full of we have to be full of truth and full demonstration of his spirit and his power before he returns. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I think that's pretty awesome. It also actually in Texas, before it goes over Nineveh, it goes over Jonah, Texas. Mm. Somebody just brought that up in the ODX chat. I was going to say, I was going to ask about that too, because I didn't know it was going over uh, Jonah, Texas. It was going over Jonah, Texas. And then Mm -hmm. if you look at the map where the two of them cross, and we're going to, you're about to ask Mm -hmm. me about the X, right? Mm -hmm. At the two of them, one of them, right there where the two cross, there's a town called Alpha, and there's also a town called Omega, and right in the center is called Rapture. Wow. Lord Jesus. It's a reminder, guys, we're about to go behind the veil. Mm-hmm. You do not want to miss this today. I'm telling you guys, it's going to be so much fun. But uh, like I said, if, we're, if we don't go behind there soon, I think Pastor Troy's going to I'm not going to mess up. Listen, I'm a professional. Okay. Everything I do is planned. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you, it is. Right? Look at Rebecca shaking her head. See? Yeah, she I, trusts me. I trust her. Yeah. yeah it's because she's Rebecca. new. No. I've no? been here for 10, ten years. 10 years. Ten years. Ten years. Oh, no, I mean new to the polls. Well, right. I know him. She knows me. See? All right. Friends, whenever we whenever we do go behind the veil, I'm going to be talking about. We're going to continue. You still have your question. You still have your, your question, and then we're going yes. to go to questions mm-hmm. from the the people that are asking questions on ODX.TV. And if you're not a part of ODX.TV, you're going to be missing out on that part. And I double dog dare you to go there. Like, well, why should I participate in that? Because you want to help me save boys and girls out of sexual trafficking all over the planet Earth. I just got back, and friends, I want to tell you, I met a 15 year old little girl. Ben was there with me in Uganda. Yep. We 
we rescued her. A true slave, an Indian man, owned her. And uh, she has a one-year-old baby. When she was 14, she got pregnant. This is a girl that has no choices in life whatsoever. Her, and here's her crime. She's a girl, and she's poor. That's it. So if the body of Jesus doesn't stand up for these people, I promise you nobody else is coming. Do you think the United Nations is coming? Uh, no. Do you think the governments of the world are coming? No. Are the uh, atheists of the world going to unite and end slavery? What about the Islamics? Are they going to do that? No. Listen, the body of Jesus has to answer this. And friends, we rescued a 15-year-old little girl. She is beautiful. She's wonderful. She has a one-year-old baby. We literally got her from the man that owned her. We are raising her right now. And she calls me Papa. And so, Ben, you, you, you actually met this little girl. I'm sorry. I got distracted by Jimmy Pitts over there. Don't listen to Jimmy Pitts. <laughs> I went to school with him. Yeah. I promise no, you. No, I did, man. She's, she is wonderful. She's just... Okay. Uh, she's, she's a great mama. She, okay. And, she's and when I told her, spirit, when man. I told her, I said, listen, I got to tell you some things. And she said, what? And I told her, I said... I was watching how you mama your baby, and you are such a good mama. That girl teared up and started crying when I told her, I saw what a good mama you are. Mm. Friends, listen, we rescued her. Uh, Schwartz saw her. Yeah. You saw her. Oh, yeah. yeah, man, you saw her. All right, and she is gorgeous. And she Now, here's, here's what I'm going to tell you. Now, I, I will have to give you the as a matter of facts and the details behind the veil because I can't make it public, but I can make it private. And so here's what I'm going to tell you is this. We are in an operation right now. I got this set up while I was in Africa. I got set up with my secret squirrel military guys that I met in Washington, D.C. when I spoke to Congress last year. And now they travel the world with me and I hook up with their teams. We actually had one guy that traveled the world with us. He, he got me in contact with all these next level military guys. And this is what they told me. Troy, about a month back in a certain nation in Africa that I cannot disclose, um, these extremist Islamic terrorists came in, and it was like the October 7th event that happened to Israel that nobody wants to talk about anymore. Everybody's like, well, it's really not that big of a deal. It's a big deal, and we're not going to forget about it. Hallelujah. Israel, I just got to tell you this, not everybody hates y'all. The body of Jesus loves you, and we stand with you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I, this thing happened. They came in like Genghis Khan. They circled this city. They circled the city. Um, they captured all the all the stray, the straggler people. All the people huddled up, uh, more than a thousand people. They huddled up together, and then they brought the captives, and they begin to murder them in front of these people to terrorize them. And said, "If you don't come out, and if you don't, if you don't come out right now, we're going to murder everybody." So all the people came out. They murdered those people anyway. They murdered and tortured all the men. Without going into being too explicit, they they brutalized, sexually br brutalized all the women in broad daylight, and then they took the women and children captive, and they're gone. The world yawns, and the reason why the world yawns is because this was not the LGBT community; these are Christians, and they're not, and they're 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 just a different group of people. And so it's like nobody cares. Nobody cares about them. They're poor. Um, they don't have a voice, and so nobody cares. Even though more than six thousand people in this one nation have been captured or they have been murdered since January the 1st, more than 6,000 and the world yawns. We are involved with the military. We are involved with governments. We are involved with some super, with some super professional people that are involved in this. And we're going after more than 500 women and children that need to be rescued. And out of all the ministries in the world, they knocked on our door and said, we know that y'all do this. And we know that we know that you want to do this. Do you want to help us? I said, yes, yeah. we have already moved $50,000 to move the military guys there. So friends, I did that and I said yes, knowing that there's people who support us and people who love us. I did this without a budget. I did this without whatever. And you know what? If you'd like to give to Troy Burn Ministries, if this causes you to give, I'm saying that that's a good thing to give to. Hallelujah. Give because guys, this is the kind of stuff that we do all the time. Now on the other side of this, there's going to be an ongoing expense that I can't tell you about the operations yet. I will, I'll tell you behind the veil a little bit more when we get into a private mode. But I can tell you that there's going to be more and more and more expenses. And I just got to go to the Troy Brewer Ministries account and just I'm saying yes. And I'm pulling that money out of there and I'm paying for these things as as I'm paying for many other things like the event that happened in Chiapas, Mexico last week. 
um, all the things, guys, that we're working on all over the planet Earth. Please give. I'm encouraging you guys to call the number. The number is 877-413-0888. Guys, let's get that up on the screens. There's a delay. Oh, there's a delay. 877-413-0888. And also, you can go to odx.tv, and you can give right there. Guys, this is real. This is real. Uh, we were estimating this morning, what's it... What is the cost of this thing going to be? It's going to be, by the time it's all, it's, it's hard to say because the operations, there's going to be extensive costs with the operations of freeing these slaves. And if I can just say this, I want to just say this to everybody. If, if you're mad and you're outraged over slavery being here in the United States 150 years ago, but you won't lift a finger to save a slave today, uh, keep it to yourself. Hallelujah. This is real. This is going on right now, and these people need our help, and nobody in the world loves these people. We do. We stand with the body of Jesus everywhere we go, and I, I'm thinking about them. I'm praying for them. My heart is broken over them, and I am actually doing something about it, and I would like for you to participate in this. Help me. How in the world could God not bless our own families if we're out rescuing other families all over the planet Earth? I'm sowing into this for the day that hell comes to America. Amen. Amen. I'm sewing into it. I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Go to odx.tv or you can call the number at 877-413-0888. And Miss Connie, if they give, if you guys give a hundred bucks, if anybody wants to give a hundred dollars, I've got something that I want to give you today that is really, it's really stupid cool, actually. Okay. Troy Brewer Ministries has a new game. Dun, 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 dun. Like, what are you talking about? It's a game. All right, tell us all about this because this is crazy cool. Oh, okay. So it's called our Pray and Play Cube, and it is a game that we specifically Pray developed for families cube. for Easter. And so, fortunately, you don't have to just trust my word for it. You can look at the instructions on the back. I don't even if you know give. if I can open the box on this thing. <laughs> but if you give $100, we will send this game, and it comes with the mm. instructions, it comes mm. with. The, all that you need for it, the anointing okay. oil, communion, also our prayer cards, and it comes with the prayer dice that Pastor awesome. Troy has. <laughs> the prayer dice. Yes. That is so Troy Brewer Ministries. <laughs> yes. It's the Uriam and Thuman. Hey, uh, we call it a cube. What is God speaking? What you do is you roll it with your family, and it'll tell you, hey, this is the scripture you go to. So all together as a family, you go to those specific scriptures. Mm -hmm. You pray them mm -hmm. over each other. You speak out prophetic declarations over each other. That's so and much what's fun. really sweet is that everyone in the family gets a chance to do this. And so then you'll write down your different prayer requests as a family and individually that you want to um, petition before the Lord. You'll put them back in this jar. And oh, throughout so the cool. year, you get to revisit those prayers it's and fun. see when the Lord has, our, has answered. This is our free gift to you if you will give at least $100 today. Call the number. Help us, guys. We've got so many awesome things going on all over the world, including the super secret African rescue that by the time this is over with, I'm going to have a story on every single one of these people we rescue. And I'm going to tell you how we rescued them. And it's going to blow your mind that we do this kind of stuff. This is real. It's legit. Let's go get these people. Now, we also are asking for something really big. If you want to give a thousand dollars or more, a thousand bucks, because this is going to cost a lot of money for us to do this. We want to give you the great resurrection package. <laughs> what is that? It's just a bunch of cool stuff that we put together that includes this game, yes, right? It includes the game. Oh. It comes with this really, really good message that you taught, Easter experience, mm -hmm. all about the red letters in the Bible. Mm, and that's comes, DVD form, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And it comes with a Bible? a Bible, and it comes with your really cool... Really beautiful, by the way. Oh, table. Coffee hop. table edition. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. Schwartz, this is how you know when you finally made it, when you have a coffee table edition book. Now, this is a... Do you have one of these? I don't. Okay, you don't. I do. And I see, like, I just turned to April the 4th, and it is a salute to the demoniac. Like, what is that? It's like one of my favorite people in the Bible. And the demoniac, that brother has taught me so much. I've learned so much from that guy. And it's like, what are you talking about? Like, no, that's what that is. And then it's a daily devotional. It's got all 365 days yes. of the year. Beautiful. This year has 366 in it, by the way. You need to make an updated version. I need to put an additional page in it, I think. <laughs> For leap years. <laughs> anyway, guys, 
Check out that whole bundle, guys. It also has communion. It has you can anoint your house with oil. It's it's just a fun thing that we put together. Listen, if you want to stand with us today with a gift for $1,000 or more and help me save boys and girls out of sexual trafficking and true slavery all over the planet Earth, guys, this is our free gift to you. Call the number. Call 877-413-0888. I promise you guys this is real. This is legit. It's not hyperbole. It's not uh, any of those things. I mean, I promise you we are going after five. 500 women and children that Islamic terrorists have right this second. And I think we've already, this year, I think we've rescued around 300 kids um, so far. Um, already. More than that. One more. And so that's pretty daggum amazing. All right, guys. Well, it's time for us to go behind the veil, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Miss Connie, we're about to go behind the veil. And uh, what are we going to talk about once we go over there? Uh, we're going to get deeper into the April 8th eclipse that's coming up. Yes, ma'am. And we're also going to be able to share some things that we couldn't share while not behind the veil. Yes. Mm. And, uh, guys, we're going to do that. And I know that we have Wednesday night church this mm-hmm. coming Wednesday night, open door. I'm going to be there if I'm not unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> I have, you have no idea how tired I am. I, no, I'm I'm serious. Serious. I did this last week. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like, just want to do strength. Don't I wanna, eat, I wanna eat the my mic. Hat. I want to eat my hat what right now. What's wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> All right, Taylor, take us behind the veil. Okay, guys. <laughs> also, on Sunday, guys, we're Easter? having the Easter, the resurrection. I don't listen. I get so much hate mail when I say Easter. Everybody's like, "You're the devil." I'm like, "You drove here in a Ford Taurus, so shut up." <laughs> Okay, never mind. Anyway, yes, it has demonic origins. Yes, it does. But so do we, by the way. I just, okay, <laughs> never mind. Anyway, if you if you don't like the word Easter, if you're like, that's worshiping Ishtar, okay, <laughs> okay, yes. No, you got hate mail for Oh, that. dude, that is... you have no idea how people like, you are so the devil for saying Easter. Oh, it's hilarious. So let's, let's just call it Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Because we are here to celebrate, celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the resurrection experience at Open Doors going to be this coming Sunday and it's going to be a hoot. It's going, it's going to be, be really good. Awesome. So guys come out at nine o'clock, 11 o'clock. If you know somebody that is stuck, if you know somebody that can't go from here to there, if you know somebody that doesn't know where to go or how to get there, bring them to open door church and join us live or online mm-hmm. for that experience on this coming Sunday. Are you going to be a part of the worship team? I sure am. Are it's you? Gonna, it, you're going to love it. Am I really? Mm-hmm. Okay, man. We've been preparing and it's just blow your mind. <laughs> well, guys, we're also going to have communion together, yes. and then that's going to be amazing. So come out this coming Sunday. All right. So listen, guys, we're going to go behind the veil. If you are on ODX.TV, just stay right where you're at. Just hold your horses. We're going to be right there. For the rest of y'all, I'm going to let you go. And until the next time I see you, I call you the head and not the tail, the above and not beneath, and highly favorable.